In this segment of the tape, we'll be looking at integrating some of the different types of treatment uh, assessment techniques in the lumbar spine and utilizing some of the more advanced locking techniques um, and to enable us to use different treatment approaches so that we can avoid um, instabilities and hypermobilities. The usual um, method of the initial assessment of the lumbar spine is often position testing where we test uh, the position of the lumbar vertebra in f extreme flexion and extension and we're palpating over the transverse processes to see if the process is having an effect on the overlying tissue. That is, if it's rotated left or right either in flexion or extension. And these are basically muscle energy assessment techniques based on osteochromatic position. The problem with using positional testing alone is that it really doesn't tell you, first off, if there is a dysfunction, whether it's one of hypomobility or hypermobility, or even if there is a dysfunction, this may simply be compensatory. Um, to be fully effective, it's better to use the position tests as a lead-in to passive mobility testing where we can definitively assess the end fill and then determine whether we have a hypermobile or a hypomobile segment that's providing this osteochromatic malposition. Um, not to get into too deeply to the actual techniques of position testing, we'll be looking at um, having the patient flex, coming on to the uh, paraspinal areas, palpating over the transverse process, and feeling to see if one transverse process is posterior compared to its partner on the other side. If it is posterior, then we say that basically it's rotated in that direction. So if the left transverse process was posterior, we would say that the vertebra is left rotated. Uh, because of the mechanics of dysfunction, if we flex forward and the left um, side of the segment can't flex, then essentially the vertebra will side bend and rotate around that side and end up basically unflexed on that side and side bend and rotated, rotated towards it. So it would be relatively extended, side bent, rotated left, or in the parlance of uh, muscle energy, it will be an ERSL. If it was the right side that was unable to extend, then when we put the patient into extension, we would see that the left facet or the left side of the vertebra would extend okay, the right side wouldn't. So again, we would rotate and side bend to the left, but this time the vertebra would be relatively flexed, so it would be called a flexed left rotated left side bent vertebra or an FRSL. Now, of course, both of these may also be caused by a hypermobility on the opposite side. So rather than having an, an ERSL caused by a left hypomobility, we could have a right hypermobility allowing the right side to overflex and producing the same dysfunction, malpositional dysfunction. It's our job to try and sort out whether this malposition is reflective of a true dysfunctional segment. So having determined that we have an ERSL or an FRSL or whatever, we will then position the patient such that we can test for the possibility of hypomobility causing this positional malformation. So let's assume that what we had was an ERSL. Okay, that is the left transverse process was posterior inflection. So what I need to do basically is to try to flex that segment, right side bend and right rotate it to see how far that left side will flex. So having put the whole spine into that position, in fact what you're doing is putting it into the opposite quadrant, having put the whole spine into that position, we can then come in and test the end fill for that segment and compare it to the one above and the one below. And we can use the end fill as a definitive test for mobility. If we have good mobility, then we are going to end up having to wonder whether it's not hypomobile but hypermobile, in which case we'll turn the patient on their other side and check that quadrant and look for a, a, a softer end field than there should be and we can then definitively say it's hypermobile.